find the area of the region. You have to find the area of this region here under this graph. So to do that, all we have to do is integrate this function uh, from zero to this x value here, which they tell us is the natural log of the square root of three. So let's go ahead and do it. So we have the definite integral from zero to natural log square root of three of this function, three e to the x over one plus e to the two x dx. So to integrate this, we have to rewrite this in a way that allows us to use a familiar formula. So watch, I'm going to rewrite it as follows. Zero to the natural log, square root of three, three e to the x over, write the bottom piece as one plus e to the x parentheses squared dx. And you can see now um, the way the math works here is if you have e to the x squared, there's two ways to think about it. Method one, you multiply the two in the x, so that just gives you two x. Method two, you write it twice and you add the exponents. x plus x is two x. So both methods lead to the same result. So now we're gonna make a u substitution so that we can use uh, this formula from the past. Uh, it's one over a squared plus x squared dx. This is the formula that gives us arc 10. And this is one over a arc tangent of x over a plus c. So this is the formula that we want to apply in this problem. And you know, after some practice, immediately when you see this problem, eventually you should be able to say, oh yeah, e to the two x, that's really e to the x squared. I can use the arctan formula. So eventually that's where you want to be. You want to be at the point where you can just look at this and know, oh yeah, this is gonna be one of those arctangent problems. If you're not there yet, it's okay, but uh, you will get there. So u is equal to e to the x, right? Because here it's x, this is gonna be our u here, e to the x. And then du, well, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So this is e to the x dx. Uh, there's a three here. I think we could just pull the three out. So we'll do that um, when we get to the substitution step. And we do have limits of integration and we made a u sub. So we're supposed to change them. So let's do that. So let's do the bottom one first. So when x is zero, you basically take the zero and you plug it in here. So you get u equals e to the zero which is equal to one, so u is equal to one. And now let's do the other one, when x is equal to the natural log of the square root of three. Oh, this is cool. So u is equal to e to the ln of square root of three, and these cancel, and so you get u equals square root of three. <laughs> so rigged. All right, let's do this. So I'm gonna come down here because there's more room, and we'll pull that three out. So we did that. And let's see, the zero is going to become one. So one. And the natural log of the square root of three will become the square root of three. So square root of three. And we're left with e to the x dx. But that's here. And we said that's du. So that's just one over. And we have the du here. And then we have one squared, that's our one. And then this is u squared, so plus u squared. Let me just go over that again because it's, it's far up on the page, so it's a little bit harder to follow. So we took the three, pulled it out, check. The e to the x dx, that's the du, looks okay, check. One squared plus u squared, yeah, everything looks, looks okay. All right, using the formula now, this is equal to three times, and it's one over a, so a is one, so one over one, arc tangent of u over one. And we don't have to add a c, right? Because um, it's a definite integral, so we're going from one to the square root of three. So this is equal to three arc tangent of u, and we're going from one to the square root of three. So this is equal to, so first we plug in the um, square root of three. This is three arctangent 
square root of 3 minus 3 arctangent of 1. And here's where uh, a lot of people uh, probably um, would get stuck, in my view, I think, because uh, people have a hard time memorizing um, the arctangent of the square root of 3. So if you have a calculator, you can put it in your calculator. However, if you're in radians, it'll give you a decimal. If you're in degrees and you plug it in, it'll give you 60 degrees, which you can then convert to radians, which is pi over 3. So a, a really quick, quick, cheap trick is put it in degrees, get the answer that'll give you 60 degrees, and then you say, oh, okay, that's pi over 3. Because you do want radians as an answer. The other way to do it is to grind it up by hand. So you would let y equal the arctan of square root of 3, if you don't have it memorized. You could do it this way. You could come up with it. Here's how. So the arctangent takes the square root of 3, sends it, sends it to y. So the tangent takes y and sends it back to the square root of 3. And y is in this interval here, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. That's from memory because that's the range of the arctan function. Because y is equal to the arctangent of the square root of 3, so y is in the range of the arctangent function. So now what do you do? Well, you have to use some thinking. This is really sine y over cosine y, and this is equal to the square root of 3. You might say, ah, I see. The sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So if you let y equal to pi over 3, it'll work, right? Because you would get sine pi over 3 over cosine. So if you memorize the ones for sine and cosine, you can kind of play with this in your head like this. And you can do some really quick math. I can't write any faster. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you could go through all of this if you don't have it memorized. Or you could memorize it. Or you could put it, your calculator in uh, degrees and get 60 degrees converted to pi over 3. So this is one of those things that people have such a hard time with in uh, trigonometry. Um, so it just takes a lot of practice. Arctan of 1 is pi over 4. Again, same procedure. And so we get uh, pi minus, right, because these cancel, pi minus uh, 3 pi over 4. So it's a 3. So uh, you have a whole pi, and you take 3 pi over 4 away, you're left with pi over 4. You can also think of it as 4 pi over 4, right, because it's really 1, minus 3 pi over 4. And I'm doing that so we can actually subtract. So now we actually have pi over 4. It's just a cheap trick. You can do this trick here so that you can actually subtract, because now they both have the same denominator. So that's the area. The area is pi over 4. Wow, this video is almost 8 minutes long. A few more seconds, and we're at 8 minutes. I hope this video has been helpful.